<laughs> Welcome everybody to the show. Boy, what a nice show we have for you. Just look <laughs> who we have in the studio. <laughs> Rob, you made it, brother. Hey, Harry, how you doing, man? Elbow bump. COVID, COVID hello. Uh, they say six feet apart, but I mean, like you were talking earlier, if you have sex, I mean, six feet apart, I mean, that leaves almost all us men out. Well, Nine pretty much, but I mean, well, now, I mean, the problem is now <laughs> is that you don't even get to have the fun of like being with someone when, the, you know, 90s when I made this record, you could die from having uh, relations with somebody, but at least you had the fun experience. Now, you can't get within six feet and you might die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think it all got turned a little backwards somehow uh, with this COVID thing, but um, you know, I'm just trying to keep it all moving forward and uh, always happy to see you. We, we've we never had a bad time. <laughs> never. And we haven't even had a beer together. I know. Don't bring that in. The Don't bring that in. Hey, we've got some. Day. Rob Mullins, the entire album on the backdrop. So were you going to hear it in kind of like uh, our bed of music so this is how it sounds this is rob mullen so you're on the radio and you hear i'm just going to turn it way down cool so yeah this is the uh music for lovers remaster that i just uh, recently completed it's a valentine's day release it comes out officially on all the uh, major platforms tomorrow on the 12th and for all of you uh men out there who are last minute valentine's guys this is the music that you want to save your butt going through the weekend <laughs> to save your butt. well you know um men can be kind of slow sometimes on the uptake with that stuff but um i've already been getting a lot of great comments from people that have been writing in about the pre-release because it's available for a pre-release on apple amazon spotify uh all over the place and and this one guy sent me an email yesterday. He said, this is serious baby-making music. <laughs> and you could throw it up on your Bose stereo system, crank it up, and then you get your wine out, you bring out your chocolate-covered strawberries. Oh, yeah. And then make love to Rob Mullins. I mean, not to Rob Mullins, unless you have something. <laughs> He's smiling. Well, it's kind of funny because, you know, <laughs> if you think about it, I actually have been in a lot of bedrooms, <laughs> you know, over, over the years <laughs> this has come out. And, mm -hmm. But it's just my music, you know, it's not me actually. And uh, it's kind of like comfort, uh, you know, music like this is comfort music for your heart. That's how I look at it because with all the problems going on in the world right now, people are turning to music that they're familiar with. A lot of people have sent me pictures of the kids that they made to this music. <laughs> and named them and, Rob. And uh, <laughs> they're all named Henry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I told him oh, Henry, I mean, Rob. Uh, I told him I mean, that's my middle name is Henry. <laughs> and you can find me at KUHS. <laughs> but now it's grandkids, too. And, and that's right. it right there, Rob, isn't it? Rob Mullins, oh, music, yeah, for music, music for lovers. Music for lovers. And uh, it was a fun time in my life when I made this album because I was living in Huntington Beach. I had a residency gig every Friday night at a great club. Lots of great players coming through there. Pretty much everybody in the jazz and the smooth jazz scene in Southern California came through there. Uh, Michael Linkton, Jeff Cashua, Eric Marienthal, Wilton Felder from the Crusaders, who was my good buddy, would drop in there. Peter White, who was uh, you know, living mostly in the UK, he would come do a big concert oh, in LA and then, he, monster, and then he would call and say, can I come by <laughs> your gig and sit in and play? And I'd be like, no, please don't. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know, I, well, no, but, he, but he would, and he, yeah. he's a great player, too. So, you know, it was an era. This is kind of like a, a period piece. And it also, Henry, what goes along with this is that it's a, an album. This isn't something that you want to just, you know, one song, and then you're going to go listen to something else. It's a concept album designed to help guys out. It right? was interesting because you said that, and, and last week I played four cuts of it. And right after that, you know, I kept going a few other songs. Then I started getting the texts, and who is that? I, I just mentioned who it was. Wow, Dude. great. Yeah, it, it really went over good. I said, That's this is the prelude to who's coming to the studio, and you can hear it on the backdrop if you're on the radio. You can hear it gently playing back there. Heart to Heart is playing right now. Nice. That's the uh, first cut on the record. Yeah, the song titles, Heart to Heart, Hopes and Dreams, Tonight's the Night. You're really having a conversation. You know, It could be with uh, your Valentine that you've had for many years, or you're just meeting a new person and you'd like to have some chill music to play to just kind of help move things along. Because music is the 
have said since the 90s, it really comes down to it's the soundtrack of your life, you know, and whatever that you have playing. Instrumental music, I think, is particularly good because you're not going to get distracted with the words and the singing and the meaning and the inferred meanings and all that stuff. It's just chill music to just kind of help everything slide together cool. That's it. And it's true about all what you have going on here, Rob. Uh, let the audience know how many albums you've done. I always say 40 plus. 40 plus. Well, that's a good range. You, you know, you can still you can still pull a 40 plus. <laughs> no, <laughs> I thought you were yeah. 60. Well, yeah, I am, but I mean, I've got the I can reach the six foot. You could reach the six and foot. And I told under. you why. You know, like don't mention it again. Because <laughs> see what Henry he does, people. Like, this is the thing: is like he brings up this crazy stuff in the back room before we get started, <laughs> and we're howling. And we can't say any of this stuff on air. And then he starts saying it. <laughs> Everybody knows me. As, oh, Andrew, where are you getting this? Where are you getting this material? But I know because it's from my generation. Like, we used to Always have really comics like George Carlin, oh my who we thought was, you know, really hilarious and really fun. And George uh, Carlin would bring out the real stuff, though, oh, yeah. about real life, but make it so freaking funny. He, he, he had a knack for that. But in terms of the albums, 40 plus is really where I'm at. I mean, this is a remaster, a re-release of other music, but if you go online now and go to Apple, there's 233 songs uh, of mine on Apple, and that's not everything. Like, you know, you can put out an album, and other recording artists out there uh, that I want to say hi to that are listening know this, it's not <laughs> guaranteed to get on, on Apple Music. It's not guaranteed to get on Spotify. It's not guaranteed to be on Amazon. They have people, curators and listeners and uh, playlist people that actually decide that for you. So I feel really lucky that pretty much yeah, everything yeah. that I put out is on there. Is uh, coming up. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of things. Sometimes uh, some you know groups or individual artists and what whatnot they all get on Spotify and iTunes and all that, and they'll get lost in the millions of others. But yours, Rob, just floats right up there with the best of them because you've been around a long time. You know how to get this done. And Plus the promotion, you know, we, we love to promote your stuff because you're a Denver icon and everybody says, he belongs to Denver. No, he belongs to LA. No, he belongs to Denver. Okay, I'm going to put him on the freaking spot. What city you like the best? Come on, if you I say like, LA, I'll kick you. I like everywhere. Oh, see, he's trying, <laughs> to, he's trying to play it off really good. I like Tokyo. <laughs> I like Moscow. Um, I like Facebook. <laughs> I like Denver. Um, you know, I'm not a WhatsApp guy. This is kind of weird. I had this um, lovely lady from Singapore the other day hit me up on Facebook, and she's got this picture of herself, and she looks incredible. And she said, oh, well, um, you know, and she sent me a friend request, so I'm thinking, this doesn't happen this often. <laughs> she's probably about 23, and she's in the little sunny hat and the thing. And so we start talking on Facebook Messenger, and uh, she says, well, what do you do? And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> you sent me a Facebook friend request, and it says right on there that... You and you know, wonder why they do that. Why yeah. do they do that? And then <clears throat> and then we're talking for about 10 minutes, and then she goes, oh, well, if you want to talk to me any longer, you have to install WhatsApp on your phone. And I was like, is that what it's come down to? <laughs> it's like, if I don't have the same app as you, then we're not even going to be friends? Apparently not. So. Well, you know, WhatsApp is also a different, uh, you know, little app that you can talk directly to each other or online. Or whatever. Right, right. Well, I used, I used it in, in India last summer because it was the only thing that worked. Facebook wouldn't work over there. Yeah, th there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, because we go on live all over the world. That camera there is, you know, we're on our uh, Twitter page, we're on our YouTube page, we're on our Facebook, or not only that, but our website carries it in, in large format right. too. Well, you guys should see all the stuff he's got in this room. It's <laughs> like... Uh, He's either the world's greatest high-tech genius or the world's loneliest man. <laughs> <laughs> See, he throws out, he throws because, out the, because he's got he wonders stuff. why he catches he's got stuff. He's got stuff in here. Like, uh, that's George Carlin. he got all this stuff, you know, so. so and these lights have uh, lightened us up. It makes us look great. On well, it. you know, I think those lights are new. Uh, oh, uh, since Because I haven't right? been here for, like, well, I did Melissa's show. Yeah, I remember. Uh, in September, Ignite <coughs> with Melissa. Shout out to the Woo woo, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she cracks me up, man. She had me laughing like insane because she was just all the time just just having such a good vibe. 
and such uh, charisma. You know, she's a really warm-hearted uh, and, and let me person. tell you about Melissa. You know, I yeah, I want to know. Rob, Rob is a really, indi- uh, you know, a, um, an individual that's traveled the world, has been around all these big names, acts and stars. She goes, well, I don't, you know, and I said, and to her, mm-hmm. I'm sitting next to Rob, and she, to her, it's like, I didn't get very nervous. And then she starts looking at everywhere you've been and everything you've done. <laughs> and you can see her like, whoa. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's Brad Pitt. Uh-oh, that's Bruce Willis. Oh, this is fantastic. <clears throat> Negrito, who's uh, up for a, a Grammy, Grammy. Mm-hmm. for a contemporary, best contemporary blues. And uh, his real name is Xavier. Shout out, bro. Hope you win. Uh, Grammys got moved. You probably knew that. Yeah. They were supposed to already have them. But... The Grammys are happening on March the 14th, I believe, now. And, and, to and the 14th or the 21st. I wanted to ask you this before I forget, you know, because I've got a short memory. Oh, yeah. Well, that's now, not the only was thing I, short about what was, <laughs> what was I going with this? <laughs> you already forgot. <laughs> I just did. <didn't. laughs> you talking about Xavier? Or? Uh, no, no. The halftime show. He, he reminded me of the halftime show. Oh, the Super Bowl? Yeah. No, wait. Before you go there, I wanted, as a musician, you're going to hear it from Rob Mullen. Mm. What did you think of? The weekend now, you know, they say you're supposed to have sex before the weekend. Oh, so he, he's got the he's in reverse order, yeah, he's in reverse order, <laughs> so he's already screwed, <laughs> yeah. he's already going backwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're supposed to start with the sex and then have the weekend, is that yeah, that's, that's the way it's supposed to go. Right? Honestly, you know, if if you want me to tell the oh, the way they said it, that the uh, chiefs uh, were effed before they had the weekend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's was, right, it, because there's a jokes. lot of chiefs fans yeah. around, mm-hmm. and right. then the uh. He did the Fifty Shades of Grey song. Do you, you remember Fifty Shades of Grey? Look, man, I, you know. Here he goes, here he goes. Coming from Rob Mullins' mouth now. Uh, if you want to replay this video, you can hear it. He's trying, well, he's, he's got this smirk on his face. Like, I'm not feeling very smirky, man. I'm actually <laughs> very disappointed in that show. See? I was super disappointed in the show. And here's one of the reasons I was disappointed in it. The musicians in there weren't real musicians. And I support people that actually play instruments and spend 20 years getting good at the cello. And then you look up in the thing and nobody's playing. It's just a bunch of people with these fake yeah. instruments not, not really actually... Jamming. No, they're not even musicians. They're actors. They're not playing their instruments. The so, actual cello, so that, the actual yeah, violin. No, it's nothing. all a pre-record. There's nothing live going on. I mean, back in the day, they used to just have like... You know, a band would come out like Springsteen. Like Bruno Mars. Yeah, Bruno Mars, and he would kill it. Yeah, (laughs) he would just kill it, and it would just be all about the music. But now there's this dark, shady kind of imagery that he has, Um, and it's not a new thing for the weekend. He's always done these kind of uh, ghoulish, creepy blood on the face. Uh, (laughs) No, if you go back and watch his earlier stuff, look like uh, you know, because all the Chiefs were in the uh, locker room during halftime looking for their jock straps. Well, if you look at that video, they, they were covered, all their faces, you know, were covered with the jog straps. That's so disgusting. <laughs> you told me not to cut up, I'm sorry. No, I'm man, nervous. that's, I hadn't thought of it that way, but now you've ruined it even <laughs> further for me. And I can't unhear that comment, and I can't unsee the new image in my head of Rob always does this how bad He always brings have. out the worst, and yeah. I don't know what it is, because well, he's got this energy that he brings in here. If his piano was here, he'd probably jam out and do do this. No, 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 no. I'm going to do that one of these days. I'll come in and, and bring my keyboard. Progressive in. scaling. And, this uh, is Henry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll do that at some point. But I'm glad that you asked about that because, see, the guy is a big selling artist and the music on the radio, well produced. Sounds great. Talented guy. But get over all the dark imagery, man. I was thinking if, you know, <clears throat> I don't have any kids and. But if you had like a five year old and a seven year old watching this, you see all these guys in these masks, and it's like a horror show, and there's blood and stuff. That's not the Super Bowl to me, bro. That's right. It's yeah. not. It, it, the Super it, Bowl to me is the planes are flying over and everybody's and having a good time. And Michael Jackson jamming, the Bruno Mars, the, the uh, Who, the, the Who, who did it. Uh, Tom Petty did it, and he was geez, great. The rocking out the right way. Tom Petty was like. Ridiculous. Yeah. So good. All the good artists that came out and just jammed out. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? That everybody expects the Super Bowl to be, okay, let's dance and let's cheer our beers, our wines, or 
are you, like they would say the chili Rihanna and there's a picture of a <laughs> Rihanna on the end of the chili you know chili Rihanna. <laughs> now see that's the whole reason to drive to Denver <clears throat> is for the chili Rihanna's <laughs> now I found a new place to <clears throat> to eat them it's called El uh, uh, Topatillo or yeah, something? Topatillo. Uh -huh. Oh my god, have you had that, like the soft chili reino there? Don't get the crispy one. Yeah, because it's but just the, the, the soft no, one. No, the soft one is like, it's a it's a meal for a day and a half. It's so good. And um, I always get the number 15 when I when I go there, because it comes with an enchilada and the beans and rice and everything. It's good, man. You know, Rob, it's like, uh, for some reason, Denver in the Denver area is a chili city. It is. The best chilies and chili types of foods and and Mexican foods and you know all the different varieties and always good and hot yeah it's not just well they have the miles and stuff but mainly they serve it hot well the green <coughs> chilies and then you know you can get like at Las Delicias yeah. uh, another shameless plug because I love that place too <laughs> I mean I've been eating at the original one at 19th and Penn since they opened in 76 yeah and I still go down there um, I like the one off of Colorado Boulevard as well but those what do they do here? You can explain it because you, you're more of an expert than I am. They like ferment them or they they uh, cure the chilies? Yeah, and they're and then like they put the, your, your uh, cheese inside and then they, they put it in the batter and then they deep fry it and they bring it out. And, oh. Oh. Okay, okay. This will be we're right back. Off. <laughs> we said at the same time. Thanks a lot. We Can said I, this at the same time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Okay, what's that number for at last week? Just again. <laughs> and it's just right up the street. There's one off of 84th, just up the hill there. It wouldn't be the one off of 84th and Broadway. Sort of, yeah. 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 You don't like that? Yeah. No, not at all. No, I love it. Well, I'm sorry. I, I go there after this. I go to um, the one that's in my kitchen. Well, well. <laughs> I'm I ruined this whole day. Well, no, actually, if you I'm a no, I'm a great chef with like barbecue and steaks and stuff like that. But I like to get those chilies that you can even get get them like uh, what are they called Santa Fe chilies or something? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's like the strips and they're in the sauce so and they're in the can or the sauce or whatever. Yeah, and you stick those along with the carne asada. Like you said, we're right back. Uh, so anyway, we're getting hungry, and hopefully you're getting horny, you know, <laughs> because that's what this album is about. That's right. And this song is Nadine. Mm -hmm. What made you name the song Nadine? There's a meaning behind that song. There is. Nadine. There is a Was girl. she good? She tried to stab me in the middle of the night. Well, she, she must have been Latina. Well, I love you, Rob. I love you. You're a minute late. Ugh. <laughs> I actually, there was a girl from this era, and she's on my Facebook, so I'm not going to say her name, Priscilla. <laughs> but I remember she came over to spend the night with me, like back in the day in that era one time, and this is, uh, you know, Huntington Beach era. And we're laying there, and she says, You better be really nice to me, because if you're not tonight when you're sleeping, I'm oh. gonna stab you! Oh my God! <laughs> Did she really know? She really well, said you that. were like this. This is how uh, Rob is sleeping that night. One eye open, and he switch off like a Rest. like a Karen yeah. Carrier in the woods, baby. <laughs> I mean, one my eye God. open. That's the way you're supposed to always sleep. A lot of men don't know this, especially after you play the Rob Mullins music. Yeah, this others. is a beautiful segue. So back to Nadine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the deal. What happened with this girl is there was a place. In LA, I would commute from Orange County to LA, and there was a place called uh, what it was called, and it was on Santa Monica uh, Boulevard, uh, like Valarios or Adarios, something like that, and they had this uh, little kind of mixer thing for different artistic people to come, and they had a, you know, you know how those things go. There's like a little books book reading, and then they show a little art thing, and then they play a little jazz, and this girl was sitting in front of me. And she looked so beautiful from the back that I thought, I'm just going to have to, like, you know, tap her on the shoulder and see what happens when she turns around. It could be Satan. <laughs> it, could be, it could be Cindy Crawford. She, oh, my God. Satan. So I did. I just tapped her on the back, and she was like, hello. And I went, uh-oh, South African and our Australian. <laughs> so you know you're in trouble right away because the accent will kill you. You could tell it right away just that quick. The accent gets me, man. Did you ever notice that? Anything spoken in a British accent seems 20% more true. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. why is that? Like, if you watch the news here and you go, okay, it's the news, but then you turn on, like, BBC and they're like, uh, you know, in that accent, saying something, well, with that accent, that's definitely they're telling yeah. the truth. Yeah. yeah. So Nadine and I became friends, and um, it was an interesting 
interesting relationship that just it didn't last very long because she was just visiting the United States. She was in some sort of a college program. And then uh, when that ran out, her visa ran out. So she went back, uh, went back to South wow. Africa. And then I haven't heard from her again, and I'm, I'm glad. You know, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to go over this with you. You know, uh, you play the keyboard now. Right. And some of your, I'm sure on, on, on your, because um, you have a contract that you put out there, and then you have a writer that goes with it. Do you ever put seven foot or nine foot Kanabi or Steinway or anything like that, or you just say piano uh, tuned and ready to go, Yamaha? Or, I'm not sure what your preference is. We talked about this Kauai. a little bit last time. Yeah, I, but you never did tell me. <coughs> I like Kawhi. I, I have a Kawhi GS60, which is uh, the piano that you're hearing on this album, by the way. Right. And I had it just in my home studio in Rainier Beach. I mean, I made this album basically alone in my uh, uh, studio, except for two tunes I recorded here in Denver, uh, Dreamers, and um, uh, what's the other one? Eh, maybe it was just Dreamers on this project. Yeah, it's just Dreamers, I think, um, that I did here at FTM Studios with uh, Joe Andrews on flute and a couple other guys. But a piano, I mean, pianos are like individual people. It's just, you know, somebody who gets, you'll find with classical people, okay, I've got a Stradivarius violin. Well, that doesn't make it great because the person. one person might like that Stradivarius and another one couldn't get a sound out of it. So <laughs> it's an individual thing and out. you show up at these gigs I've, I've shown up and I've seen everything known to man we ended up speaking of the contract we actually had to put this was after I did a gig here in Denver where I showed up and um, McCoy Tyner had played the piano the yeah. night before me and it was destroyed like, <laughs> if you ever seen McCoy Tyner play it's like he's like <laughs> yeah he, he tore it up and so you know I was playing it and this key wouldn't come up and then this one wouldn't go down and then this one was stuck oh, so we ended up putting in the contract 88 working keys yeah that's a good way to put it you have to say it's Do 88 you like working the, keys the keys weighted oh yeah so that way they have a really nice bounce to it. And yeah, I mean, you get to that kind of a Because you're doing thing. sevenths and ninths and, and augmented everything, so. Well, a lot of fast <laughs> rhythms. Like, I like to play a lot of 64th notes. Yes. And uh, you have to have good repeating function on those things where you're bouncing the key a certain way. Because that's the way your fingers roll. Well, yeah, but then the problem happens is that I get on <laughs> one of these little phones and I can't do a thing. Because, <laughs> you know, my hands are, so I've been playing the piano they even make, this is, I found this out, this is hilarious, look at this. So, um, I was talking with an Asian uh, student of mine uh, about a month ago, and, and she says, well, I'm really wanting to, you know, play some more jazz, but I'm working on the Rachmaninoff right now. And I'm thinking, Rachmaninoff's music, like, he had bigger hands than Shaq. Like, yeah. his hands were so huge. And she said, they actually make a three-quarter size piano Whoa. for people with little hands to be able to play Rachmaninoff. Serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, God. it's like shrunk down about <laughs> yeah. another eight inches. Because they had the 73 note type pianos too, right? So, yeah, and 61, 49. Yeah, I didn't uh, know they went down that small. Well, the MIDI ones, the yes, electronic yeah. ones too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, they go all the way down to just like a one octave or a two or whatever. But I've got you know, just listening to your music, you got to have all the octaves. Maybe. Yeah, I, I like you, the full range. Yes, I could tell. You have to have the full range. Because the, you bring out the... The, the additive part of the music that you want to generate out there, right? Right. Well, you know, hey, how do you like the way that's saying that? that was very classy then. Yeah. That was. I mean, now we've got. Well, a, back there, we now we got to roll over to Elways now. <laughs> you just stepped it up to that notch. <laughs> you know, have you ever been in a place where they have the background music guys playing? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, does, do you like that or you hate that? Because usually I, I hate it. I hate it too. I so you hate sometimes it. you want to go up there. And you almost want to say. Can I help you with that? <laughs> you know, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I always say stuff I shouldn't when I'm on your show because you can get me. Yeah, going. yeah, sure. If we start in the back, it room. starts in the back and it gets worse <laughs> for a whole hour. Said, don't be <laughs> saying that on. Don't be saying that live, Henry. I go now, Rod. Is like you bring no. the best out in me. No, the, so okay. This was years ago. This was another um, relationship thing that kind of happened. So I was in New York and I had played a gig. This was in the yeah early 80s at a place called the Bombay Club. It's at the old governor's mansion at 1228 Grant Street. Oh, yeah. And I was playing with Vic Cianetti, and I met this girl on a Friday, and she was hot. She was killing it. Her name was Margaret. And 
and she came up and she's and the eighties was a different thing. Like you know, women would follow you into the men's room to give you a kiss on the break. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like that stuff. That place was crazy. <laughs> and she came up and she said, "I'm from Australia. I'm rich, and I'm going to New York tomorrow. Do you want to go?" Whoa! And I was like, and I don't know. I was like twenty, and I said, "I have to ask my mom." <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. I did. Oh, and you went and asked your mom. Well, I took her over to meet my mother. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're on our way to Denver, to Stapleton, to yeah, Stapleton. Yeah. and um, she's paying for everything, and I'm going to New York, so I'll see you. And my mom was like, give me your phone number. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, what do I tell your father? <laughs> you know, so I get out there, and we go to this place recommended. It's called Luna's in Little Italy, and there's a musician playing over there, and the music's really bad. And I mean, you know, if you're a musician, you're going to get food poisoning. Just from listening? Just from listening to what's going on. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I ever did this. I walk over to the guy and I said, what time is your break? <laughs> and he said, in about 10 minutes. And I, I put $20 in his hand. I said, why don't you take your break now? Did you really? Yeah. Oh, my God. And he was like, uh, okay, thank you. And he <laughs> stopped playing. You know, because sometimes the people in the restaurants that are playing are the ones that can't get a real gig. gig. But yeah. they got to support themselves somehow. And... Um, you know, it's I'm not hating on these people no, or no, whatever, no, I but and I've had to do those gigs too. <laughs> but I turn them into a comedy gig. Uh, yeah, a fun time. Yeah, to have a fun time, so somebody will come. Or watch. like with Rob, he likes the baby making music times, and he always comes here around Valentine's Day, which is really cool. Because last last year we oh, gave away year. a basket. Now I was supposed to have a cake today. This gal, she makes cakes, and she's going to bring it in here live and. I think she just faced it out. I didn't hit her up because I said, oh, well. She flaked on the cake. <laughs> well, <laughs> last, la we had a fruit and nuts basket <laughs> yeah. last uh, year. And boy, we got a lot of comedy mileage out of that. Yeah, <laughs> that was really good. That was hilarious. And it came out really, really nice. So it was yeah, so I don't know. Um, some of the songs are about actual people um, uh, on this album. And, and speaking of, you know, bad gigs, let me tell you about how I wrote this song called Making Love. Um, it just rolled by in the background, but when you get the album on Apple or whatever, it's track number five. Yeah, it's track number five. If you open, to, yeah. Uh, so making love. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm playing at this like cocktail party. This is you know eighty three or eighty four, <clears throat> and it's in Denver. Um, I think it was at like this uh, Cherry Creek place. So there's all these rich people walking around and stuff, and I'm playing along. And and you know in those days. We did a lot of gigs that I like to term jazz to ignore. So, because nobody's listening, you know, so you could try stuff. <laughs> and you, once in a while you get some jerk like a Rob Mullins to come up and say, here's 50 bucks, go home. <laughs> but you can experiment. Here's 50 bucks, you know, go well, home. You can, <laughs> you can, well, in those days, that's about what a gig would pay. That's anyway. right, yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm playing, and somebody had asked me for Pink Panther. And I'm like, ba 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 boom. <laughs> and I played the tune and they gave me a tip and then it was break time and I thought Pink Panther is such a cool tune what if I took the swing feel out of it and made it straight eighth notes and changed the rhythm, the rhythm a little bit and I ended up with this bass line that goes do 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 ba ba da ba exact same notes as Pink Panther so it came out really really nice and then I thought oh I better write this down <laughs> And so I wrote it down, and then a few weeks later, I went into the studio and you know fleshed the whole thing yeah. out and and this and that. But um, yeah, and we talked about this last time, Rob. How do you pick your musicians that come and help you on the backside, <coughs> or do you do you do uh, just pre-recorded tracks or? Oh uh, yeah, well you know because I know uh, some some of them that you like to have a few live <coughs> musicians yeah, right yeah. in there. Yeah, because I mean, man, the value of your music is so so good. Well, it's an interesting thing because the. Um, I have a new album that hasn't come out yet. It's called This Way Up, and it features musicians that I met here in town before the virus hit. So what was crazy about it, I'm sitting at Dazzle, and they had uh, been, I don't know, a year ago, December, and they had a Thursday night jam session. Yeah. So I'm sitting there at the bar, and I'm having a cocktail, and there's this guy next to me, and you know he's having a beer, and then we start talking about this and that. And, oh, yeah, you like this? Oh, yeah. You like that kind of music? Yeah, I really like that. Ah, oh, well, the, <clears throat> where are you from? I'm, I'm from Philly area. Where are you from? L.A. Oh, well, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Then all of a sudden, the guy hosting the jam goes, 
Now we'd like to bring up two special guests, <laughs> Rob Mullins and Liam Zom. And then he stands up, and I stand up, and I didn't even know he was a musician. <laughs> we had just been shooting the breeze. So we both got up on stage and we started playing, and it was like what a perfect. It was don't you like that when you just... It was perfect. It's like a, it's a match made in heaven. It's yeah. like... You just know where each other's going. It's like you know, it's like mind reading without having the discussion. Unspoken words. The unspoken, you know, just a solid connection. Yeah. And Liam is a he's a younger guy. I think he's probably about twenty four or something Whoa. like now. Moved back to the Philly area when COVID got so bad. Uh, I still talk to him on on Instagram, but he's all over my new live album, which nice. I'm going to put put out once we can go live. I mean, I had a party set up at Dazzle that was canceled. But he and I, yeah, 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 but he and I talked, and um, we became really close friends after that. And I just had him come right into the studio and play. And it was his yeah, first good. big album project, and then it got shelved. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a bummer for him. Uh, and yeah. you know what's nice, Rob? You know you've uh, done some really uh, good things, but <coughs> let's talk about this COVID thing. It sat a lot of small time people, mm. intermediate, uh, local, regional, and national artists down. Now, there's some that just continue on, you know, doing their music because it's it's what they love to do now. How did you uh, deal with this? Um, I just went to the liquor store. <laughs> That's where I started. <laughs> I told you you're not supposed to say this. We were back. <laughs> we went over everything. <laughs> Bob, I went okay, to the, don't, let, don't get me started. I now. went to the liquor store, and then I went to the unemployment line. I mean, seriously. Well, you Because know, I, had, I had all these gigs. I had stuff lined up all over the place and um, just down, down there. and I had to just shelve everything I mean I just had to stop because it, the clubs were gone so in, in LA nobody really knows this but I had a, a Friday and Saturday at this private place where it was like a celebrity steakhouse yeah, yeah. you see Shaq uh, come in there and uh, James Worthy and Kanye was in there one night Jay-Z came in with Beyonce after mm -hmm you know, a big event at Staples or whatever, they weren't even allowed to open. Whoa. They were just done. They, yeah, they, 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 it's just like, we're, it's it's over. <laughs> and, you know, no more gig. Yeah. That was Friday and Saturday night, so it was a big gig. I'd get, sometimes I'd, and then the tips, I'd do really yeah. well with the tips. So, so then they would say, uh, okay, we're going to open the government. Yeah. say. Okay, everybody can open. Oh, no, it's four hours later. Everybody can close. <laughs> okay, sweet. now we're open 10%. Now we're closing. Now the school teachers are going back. Now there's no school. <laughs> and, good. you know, for anyone that's a gig economy worker like I am, I've always been self-employed, um, there was no choice, man. It was the unemployment line. That's the only way. You know, I have a nighttime gig that was doing really, really well. <clears throat> so I've seen you down there on North Larimer, yeah. Well, no, let me tell you. <clears throat> on my unemployment uh, application form, I had to put, you know, burglar, uh, no more work, everybody's home. <laughs> you know, so it ain't, working. <laughs> it ain't working anymore, Rob. It's like burglar, yeah, so out of work, everybody's home. That's yeah. classic. <clears throat> so I, well, then when, the, when, the, when the stuff started to open, then there was no music because you can't have yeah, the band. Yeah, that's right. Like that particular place. The whole stage was about the size of these two tables in the studio. So the bass is right on you, right. drums so you, are right you, on you. Yeah. The piano was nice, and it went off the side, but no. And then they wanted everybody to be masked up. How's the sax player supposed to be masked up? You know, how's the 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 the, the wind instrument supposed to do? The mask thing is really hilarious because <laughs> now they're um, double masking. They're going double. And then I was just thinking to myself, well, I'm just going to go buy a box of those. I almost did this. I was going to just buy a whole box of like 20 and just keep on putting more and more on until either you wouldn't be able to understand me or my ears would just shoot <laughs> off my head from all those straps on there. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you know, because it's gotten really out of control. It has. And, um, you know, human beings are not really designed to cope with these kinds of problems that are going on. It's really weird. Well, you know, Victoria's Secrets is even having a tough time keeping in business and stuff, but they there's, you know, their marketing department is very, very smart. Now, see, folks, this they is the crazy thing. Is like, how does he segue? <laughs> We're talking about green chili sauce, and he's at Victoria's <laughs> Secret already. No, wait. Talking about masks. 
Yeah. Okay, so they Do go. Do they sell those at Victoria's Secret? Well, they, they, they weren't being able to bring people in because of the COVID thing. Uh, so the marketing department turned around and says, here's our new mask. Oh, so how many did you get? Ten. <laughs> ten boxes. <laughs> I was going to say ten, but ten boxes. You should give them out on your night gig. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria's Secret with Henry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we always talk back to me and Rob bust up, we tell jokes and all these things start flying, but we both know once they come here into the studio, what's going to happen? And Rob just brings that out on me. I, I, I blame him. He brings in this baby-making music. Baby-making. And then he wants, you know, I, I was just thinking of Victoria's Secrets going out of business and masks. Ah, that's crazy. Well, well yeah, everybody. Have you seen how nice those masks look? No, because Victoria's I don't Secret. shop at women's lingerie stores, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hang out there, is number one. Number two, next time you call me with a bail request from <laughs> Cherry Creek Victoria's Secret, I'm going to be broke all of a sudden. Yes, he's uh, <laughs> come on, Rob, it's only 175 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> he says, no. No, 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 no. Hey, uh, right now, for the people that are tuned in on radio, we're listening to Ten Nue Me. And that is actually a uh, Burmese, they call it Mir Myanmar or something now, but this was a Burmese girl, uh, and it was her actual name that I met in Huntington Beach at that gig. Wow. That I had a, a nice, like, six months. And her name her. is That's spelled her name. differently, yes. Ten Nue Me. And here's the way it's spelled, T-I-N mm -hmm. space N-W-E space N-I. Right. So yeah, that's, crazy. That's a, that's a great name. But she went by Sue, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Sue? Sue. <laughs> uh, but, you know, re uh, a sweetheart of a girl. And, uh, you know, as far as the cover goes on this, too, that was an interesting thing because I had, um, you know, d speaking of live musicians and non-live musicians, as you know, I'm a drummer and I'm a com computer guy. So I had been working on all these demos on this project, Music for Lovers, in my home studio by myself. And I was trying to get a record deal at that time because I wasn't signed to a label. So in those days, you make a cassette tape and you start sending it out to right. radio and labels and this and that. And I had uh, made a big stack of cassettes and I printed all the letters and I said, Dear Mr. Radio Person, Dear Mr. Label President, I have these demos. And I'm sending them to see if you'll sign and maybe put out my album. So I sent, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 of these out. Silence. I heard not one thing from one person. I was so crushed. I was so mad. And then I realized I'd been touring with the Crusaders and Hubert Laws, and I had an Amex Platinum card. <laughs> so I went, um, and I looked over that one night, and there's the girlfriend's earrings were right there on the night table. And I was like, if I put those together... That's going to look like the international symbol of men and women that's together. Right. If you look the at that female cover, male, the female that's male, mm -hmm. and that's and you see that on the cover of this. And I said, "Music for lovers." Music for lovers, the brand new remaster. That's uh, I made a boo boo on the poster for that. I had I just put the re the release, the new release. I, I had to put oh. the new re release. The new I, re release. I changed yeah. it real quick. Well, there's lots of re's in the world. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I did that for the cover. And then I said, I got a platinum card. I'm going to make up uh, 100 CDs, and I'm going to send them out to people. Maybe that way I'll get some more attention. Dude, WNUA in Chicago, boom, they exactly. put it on. <clears throat> CD 101 in Connecticut, boom, they put it on. Uh, KUTE in LA, boom, they put it on. KJS, they put it on. Everybody. KBLX, boom. So all of a sudden... About <laughs> three months after I had finished these demos, which were not supposed to be released, my phone starts ringing. Hey, Rob, it's Warner Brothers. Oh. Now you want me. Hey, Warner Brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've been hearing a lot of good stuff about your, your new album. What's it sound like? And I said, well, about three months ago I sent you a cassette. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Did you ever listen to it? Did you? Because, you know, and to be fair to those label guys, they get so much material sent right. to them, probably just like you. Yeah, but, you know, we take time, I say, two weeks to get it listened to. Right. Why two weeks? I, because we get so many 
coming in here. You know, it's hilarious. Now, let me ask you this. This is like kind of a personal question, but it's also a media. It's not thing. about my nighttime business. It's not about it's you. Not about it's not about your new Batman Victoria's Secret outfit. <laughs> I saw those pictures on the See, way he in. gets started. See, he wonders <laughs> why. You put Batman, Robin, and Victoria's Secret together, and you get Henry After Dark. And that's the that'll be the new show that we're going to do. It's going to be called Henry After Dark. Henry oh. After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but and people are well-meaning like I think people are well-meaning but I have 5,000 Facebook friends I have 926 Facebook fans I know more than 10,000 people personally I have email lists of about 60,000 contacts I've amassed over a 20 year period at the Grammys and as a traveler so everybody wants me to watch a video and they're so excited they're like I just saw this great new documentary about um, Alaskan aardvarks with <laughs> with this uh, with this new kind of forked tongue that's only a species <laughs> that happens only outside of Anchorage, and I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> and I go, okay, thanks. And then you know a week goes by, and here they are emailing. So, what did you think about the Alaskan <laughs> aardvark video? And I go, it's in the queue. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I said, well, let me look. Okay, so there's 71 other videos yeah. I've been assigned to watch by just people just saying, watch this. So here's here's how Rob's going <coughs> along with this. I'm going to be wearing these, you know, the Batman thing, Henry After Dark. I like Henry And I'm going to bring Dark. out this aardvark. <laughs> yeah, we got, we'll got. we have the aardvark, a <laughs> virtual aardvark is what we need. Right back here, just kind of. Just kind of <coughs> slinking. Slinking around, um, and speaking of which, we've got Slinky up there. Mm -hmm. Soulful. Uh, but coming next oh, is Slinky. slinky. Mm -hmm. So, folks, <coughs> if you just really want to get way out there, even though it's during the day, just think about aardvarks <laughs> and how mm -hmm. slinky they could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I, <coughs> like I was telling you about, you You know, you come over here during Valentine's Day. Yeah. It does. You do real well here, like a week before, because I start promoting. I start putting it up on LinkedIn. Oh, you're a genius I for the promo. It all, oh, man, I get that promo out there, and everybody yeah. says, I've never heard of Rob Mullins. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. <clears throat> mother says, "Whoa, what an artist!" <clears throat> I go, "I'm gonna be playing four of his songs, and after I play the songs, who is that?" Right. You know, it's funny too that I, after I, you just promoted the shit out of it, it's like really. Well, they say it takes uh, quite a while for, for it to for, grab hold. Yeah, for it to grab hold. But the thing that I always thought was funny is when I first put this out in WNUA in uh, Chicago put it on. It was on the Ramsey Lewis show. And wow. Ramsey Lewis is a big timer. Yeah. And he asked <clears throat> me to come on the show and then he saw a picture of me and he was like really disappointed. Oh. You know, because it's doesn't He's expect to see well, he doesn't expect to see a white guy doing this kind of music. You're, you're gonna stay that color? <laughs> <laughs> Until after dark <laughs> 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 Then anything could happen. <laughs> yeah. See, well, you're the that, one that, that went that to the jock straps of the <laughs> Chiefs on the weekend. No, well back you got me going it. back there. You right away started me up, you know, about he was saying, How is he gonna have sex? If he has to stay six feet apart from the ladies, I go well. Some guys do. <laughs> yeah, but they nobody can, does. Yeah, I says you can. No, have what a, I said actually you was talking about a baby elephant trunk and how you can. No, have you it. talked about the baby <laughs> elephant. But what I was trying to say, folks, is that in the time when this album first came out, you know, as a, a guy or dating or whatever, you would make a calculated risk. You're like, I like this girl. There's a possibility I could die if I have <laughs> sex with her because she could have something. Like, you know, uh, HIV COVID. was around. No, there was no COVID yet. Um, but then you would have the fun of the experience, and then you would wait, you know, oh, man, I hope I don't get something. Nothing, you know, I don't die or whatever. Now, in this new era, you don't even get to have the fun. You have to stay away from people, and you could still die from just walking around. <laughs> That's, That's what I was saying back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you turn it into some weird stuff. <laughs> As you always do. <laughs> oh, well, I see. I, 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 I see humor. Oh, I love Slink. I love this whole album. I Thanks, mean. man. And I'm, if you want to hear the Rob Mullins uh, entire album, Monday we're going to put up uh, a little push on it. Nice. The entire album for the first whole hour because it lasts. Uh, I mean, I can run it the whole hour. And I do right. That. I'll do um, like uh, walking like a feature. Yes, walking out of Japan. She launched only one song, so that's only going to go one, three, four minutes. <clears throat> With Rob, you get to enjoy it all because that <laughs> day we're going to have uh, nice. Dr. Elisa doing a, a show on uh, relationships and stuff. Is she the one that's the just money like, person? 
She well, talked about money and love. Yeah. Yeah, because that's I always think that's fun, man. Because you know this is I, fun. Did we talk about? Did we talk about it back there? Yeah. I mean, I, I said, well, she's a wonderful woman, and she's talking about money, and I said, well, women love money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, what woman doesn't love money? And they always seem to like. We were talking about uh, what don't you leave home without? What's in your wallet? Nothing uh, after you just met her and dated her for a couple. Yeah, years. after after I got into <clears throat> that relationship. Well, you know, in L.A., when the restaurants are open, Henry, it still costs so much money. Like, I can go to Los Delicias here and for like six twenty-five, I get this smothered uh, lettuce and cheese, green chili br bean burrito. That's amazing. That would cost me thirty bucks in L.A. and right. it wouldn't be as good. You go to a sushi meal out there if the sushi place is open. You're looking at uh, with on a date. You're looking at four hundred bucks. Jeez, just for dinner. Yeah. You know, because the valet guy is yeah, like, well, your park is twenty dollars and this and that. And it's just, you know. So uh, I love the food here in Denver, man. I found a few places that I really like. Smoking good m Mexican food, all the different. I mean, we can you can go to these Mexican restaurants and push them. We're pushing. Uh, Q Ramen out of, um, uh, they're off of uh, Colfax Avenue. And oh, really? Uh, yeah. I haven't tried them. Yeah, it's uh, Japanese food, but we have uh, our little, um, uh, we on some of the shows, we'll do the giveaways and stuff, and so we have our right. little push going on for them. So uh, there's all these variables of different restaurants that come through here. Oh, my God. There's a great one, uh, uh, Jaya Asian Grill on Colorado Boulevard. Oh, oh man. Lordy. <laughs> Man, I'm going to go there while I'm uh, visiting this week and, and get like that uh, vegetable fried rice. And then I'm going to get some of that beef and broccoli. See, he's been making me hungry since he got here. I've been I think hungry. We're hungry. Yeah, we I think we're hungry. some food in here and just ate in front of you guys. <laughs> but let me tell you, here's what we should do. Okay. And everybody should do this. Okay. You want to get laid for Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make me say that? <laughs> nope. You... Come walking in with a Rob Mullen CD, some flowers, some candy, uh, and some Asian or Mexican food. Right, and then don't this, leave home without it. Hand her this. <laughs> say here. <laughs> you don't have to give it back. <laughs> oh no! Ever. What are you saying? This helps your chances. Put that away, Rob. That's you nothing just, in it. I, irregardless, <laughs> now they're going to be saying, "Henry, where's yours?" <laughs> <laughs> It was David Spade did those commercials for Capital One. Yeah, that. Is, there's several that do it for Capital One. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, David was the early guy. Yeah, he was the early person. What a hilarious yeah. dude, man! Don't leave home without. Me. I love the. I love David Spade. He he would sat in front of me at uh, the Brad Pitt wedding, and he did not stop cracking jokes like through the whole thing. Like, you take this one to me, and David Spade has got like a supermodel twice his size on this side and he's got one on this side <laughs> <coughs> he's holding both of their hands he's just telling jokes oh there's uh there's the new hunter biden neighborhood oh really yeah it's just right down the street that's the venice canals and you know hunter biden speaking of la news he just bought the uh, like a four million dollar house in venice so some of the neighbors are like Okay, and some of the other neighbors were like, get that guy out of the neighborhood. <laughs> but you know what's crazy, Henry, is he's got Secret Service protection. So now there's all this free security service for the people that live around So they're kind of liking that somewhat, right? <clears throat> well, yeah, because it's gotten super, in the last year with all this stuff, it's gotten super violent, super dangerous in Southern California, and especially in Venice Beach, like really bad stuff is happening. So, but I was thinking if I pass Hunter on the road, <laughs> um, and he needs to get his new laptop repaired. I'm going to send him over here to you <laughs> because I know you got a computer repair thing. What's the name of that business? G Wiz Computers. G Wiz. Yeah, so that's a commonly coined phrase. That's why it's easily remembered. Oh, okay. So like every time you're messing with your computer, something happens. Oh, G Wiz or God. Oh, you don't say. That. Oh, well, I'm sure Hunter's got a new laptop, <laughs> and I bet you it's, it's going to need work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell I'm going to say look what I found here it's a gee whiz <laughs> what's on there <laughs> you got to be kidding now that you're talking about this we got to bring this up and it's not political or nothing but what do you think what's going on at this point in time and I know you have some flavor to put into this <laughs> See, I don't I know act like nothing no wait what's the question sir <laughs> See, read Always my mind I have no idea what you're talking about yeah. <laughs> no what's the question <laughs> All what's going on in the, the what happened where they try to take over the capital and now there's 
we've got the impeachment, and they're talking and bringing out all the evidence and everything, but yet the other side says, what you saw seen is not what you saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a take on this, and, and I know you have something really good to say. Um, I call okay, it thank you very much. And <laughs> 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 Man, Sorry, Rob. I'm having a green chili rain over without you now. <laughs> oh, without. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you okay, to join I'm, me. I apologize. You can stay in your closet with the, with Batman's <laughs> Victoria's Secret and the hard parts. <laughs> no, you? really, uh, Henry. The the thing about it is that I'm I'm not a political person, <clears throat> and I'm not a um, I'm basically an apathetic person or a kind of a person that shrinks away from conflicts because there was stuff happening in my childhood where I would just, like, the only thing that made, would make sense is to get away from everyone. You're smart because I taught my sons how to do that. Whenever there's, you're at a party or whatever, you're dancing, enjoying the chicks, and shit starts. Out. Out. Go. Out. Take off. Out. Go spark. Yeah. Spark. Yeah, the, yeah. Best, the best response to a potential fight or conflict is to just get your ass out of there. Yeah. Because that but how did you get out of, like, you know, you would be jamming at the, at the spots or the places that right. you'd be gigging at. And there's chicks all over you, and it's somebody's wife. How uh -huh. would you get out of those? Because you have to stay there and play. And I know you right. have a gimmick. Watch, um. listen to this one, everybody. So <laughs> you're taking your girls out. I mean, you take you you have you know your wife, and you have that girlfriend. You're over at the girlfriend's house for Valentine's Day, playing Rob Mullen's new album. You're this not going to like the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way you get out of it. Now watch this one. Yeah. Okay. So um. <laughs> so I it. have. I have an uncle that I, I uh, you know, he lived in Huntington Beach when I was doing this album and playing that house gig, and he asked me, to, you know, he said, if you bring me up, you better use a, a, a fake name, so I'm going to say, okay, Zemo, we're going to call him Zemo, <laughs> and he had certain strategies about things like that, and um, when it would happen at that club, when the women would get that drunk, there was crazy stuff because you know it's a beach town, so a yeah. lot of times there's no underwear, or they're just in the bikini. They're there's no what? There's no underwear. They're not wearing underwear. So I could sell my Victoria's Secret. Stuff. Uh, you could put a mask over the front if that's <laughs> what you need to do. But but you know they'd be sitting right in front of the piano and facing me, and then you know the legs are open and they're closed, and you're just going, how am I supposed to concentrate? Then they'd come over like you said, and they're drooling, and they're on the piano. I'd say. Ma'am, you need to meet my uncle Zemo. You guys are going to get along so well. <laughs> and I would just bring him over, and he loved it because yeah. he, you know, he wasn't scared of a fight because he was ex uh, CIA and military and <laughs> martial arts and stuff. And any of these husbands that got angry, he could just, you know, with one Grab quick by the neck, with one quick him move, he would just, you know, they'd be on the floor and they're done for the night. <laughs> so that's how I do it. It's like you know, that's the old classic thing of point your gun somewhere else, you know, as long as they're not pointing the gun at you, <laughs> and if they are, and you're in that bar, just say, hey, you know, did you see that guy over there? <laughs> you know, like, oh, look at how this bad is he is. how Rob got out of all this stuff. That's I know that you've been in a couple of, kind of, I'm bringing Dub all this up, dubious, because this is, dubious situations <laughs> by Henry After Dark. <laughs> Trying to take his personal past and fantasies and blame them on the <laughs> celebrity musician guest. I'm never doing this show ever again. I've had it. It's just me and Melissa riding into the sunset. <laughs> Screw this studio. <laughs> I'm a Martian. That's my six. Did oh. you know what you just did? Wow, did you just get laid? You're going to have a little, little shoulder babies now? <laughs> Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, it, Rob's always fun to uh, bring into the studio. He always brings in the, the beautiful music. He always brings, I said, Rob, send me, send me all the music, MP3. Man, he had it right there. And so oh, I had yeah. it in here ready to go, but then it was way ahead of time. So I was like, right, man, I could play some of this. this. I played. I appreciate this. that. Yeah, that, oh, was that was really cool. That's cool. <clears throat> and that's where I get all this information about how much this album is loved. It's music for lovers. And remember, Valentine's Day is coming up. and we're It's on that Sunday. Day. Yes, it's on Sunday. So what you want to do? How to get that is that music? Yeah, you want to go on Apple today, and they still have a gift this album on there. On I, especially if you got older computers on iTunes, you want to go on there. You want to hit pre-order, gift this item, dear sweetie. I'm sorry that <laughs> I slept with your sister. <laughs> I told him Henry, not to say this. Henry stuff. made he's me still, do it. He's still going on. I told it was him. late at night. I thought she was you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> then when you showed up and well, it I did crazy. it too. So and then the second uh, one. So I'm sorry. Second round. So let's you know have this album. 
<clears throat> and you can gift the music, you can uh, share a playlist on Spotify. Uh, I'm not making CDs, physical CDs of right, this stuff it's anymore. All mm -hmm. It's all downloads and streams, but but that's okay, man. But remember this, it's a concept album. Guys, it's, what did you say, it's like 48, 49 minutes. So guys, you get a, you get about an hour. You gotta pull this whole thing off in an hour. But see, some of, some of these guys are Minutemen. So how did we, what song, <laughs> what song would fit their, their minute? I thought we weren't going to talk about the military. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought we weren't going to talk about the Minutemen and the militias and all that stuff. But, you no, know. but, you know, it'll last an hour. If you're good for an hour, some men can only last, you know, like I said. I don't really know, but Henry After Dark <laughs> is going to be the new you theme. Know, you, say, you say that, but, you know, I'm... My mind starts going about it. I know. As soon as I walk out of here, he's going to put on the oldies and he's going to turn all the lights out and go, <laughs> maybe I could do the art show. <laughs> 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 the art I would absolutely no, love it. No, really, all that, which is saying the art bark and uh, Henry Victoria's Richard, Secret. Art, yeah, all that stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. You could create some concepts. That well, we always, you know, try and get a little comedy in there. And going back to your point about the politics and the. Uh, uh, the virus and all that. Here's what I what I recommend to people as I say, keep your sense of humor. That's number one. Stay out of it as much as possible and remember the 90-10 rule. Now this is my rule and it's one of those things that I came up with. Somebody else I'm sure has it too, but if you're talking to somebody and you're saying, well I absolutely believe this and I absolutely believe that and this is real and that's not that's probably 90% true. Mm -hmm. But there's always going to be a wild card something somewhere that's a 10% chance. So what's happened now <coughs> is that the media has turned that axis on its butt. Yeah. So you've got this like 10% getting 100% of the blowout coverage <laughs> making everybody panic. Like, don't leave your house. Wear 30 masks. And <laughs> stay six feet to, away. Stay six feet away and don't go to school and don't eat at a restaurant and don't play a gig and don't make love and don't, don't, don't. See, that's, it's upside down. That's right. They just, they're, to me, it's um, engineered. You think it's engineered? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I hope it wasn't a Grammy-nominated engineer. It was. It was. Was oh, it the yeah. weekend's producer? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we I should need to ask you about this. Bro. Hey, I see, so I see a ketchup <laughs> bottle and some paper towel out there. We could do the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you need the, some of the Chiefs uh, jocks back. No, that's... Put that oh, I'm sure they sent you a few <laughs> for your support. Because, <laughs> you know, you got to have support. you got to swing by their jock straps. So, Rob, you were doing, doing... No, no. Rob, make, he pulls this out of me. I, I, I'm, I'm professional. I, I, I come across... Until noon on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob brings his music for lovers albums in here and just, you know. Well, it's, you know, I'm glad that you love it. I mean, oh, yeah, not only me. I mean, uh, Jesus. I, I love it, We too. run the Smoothie Jazz Show today and on Monday, and it's just, mm -hmm. and I never thought it would go big, you know, and I only have it for two hours on Monday, and everybody says you should do another hour on Thursday. And they said you should just do two hours on Thursday. Now oh, you have to. It's growing and growing. Like well, that. you're you're really <clears throat> smart with the way that you handle, um, you know, your fans, and you're really in touch with who's listening and, and your community. Pushing, yes, you're a real community guy, and that's one thing that I really like because I think communities and small groups, uh, like church, for example, yes. and uh, the Grammys, although they're not always a great example, and bands. And uh, you know, book club and uh, martial arts class. Keep this stuff going. Yeah. Uh, exercise class. Keep it going. Keep, we bring everything. Like you know, that keep in. the communities happening because what I noticed too was some of my younger students who just couldn't handle this COVID thing. Yeah. <coughs> they they got isolated. Wow. I want to ask you this before we uh, forget. Um, you were doing a YouTube, Rob Mullins YouTube. You were doing a, a fine job, but I know it's. Now you know how difficult it is. Oh, the podcast. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, podcasting, we've had this since 2014, and it didn't even go. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, here in 2020, 2018, 19, we started bringing it back out and remarketing it. Right. Get podcasting going. And now you're amongst, it used to be like maybe 50,000, 100,000. Now it's like a million and a half, two million podcasters. Oh, that's unbelievable. And yeah. it's really difficult to drive people to listen to your podcast. Let's say you get 100, 500, 1,000, 3,000. Now, this group came in here. Uh, it was just historic 
Theater. Oh. And uh, they did a live show here. Mm -hmm. They called it the live podcast. They would record it. Now, they got the live getting this giant audience of ours. Right. And then they would put it up on their website and get garner another thousand, five hundred thousand, which was great. Well, Smart. you've been generous because <coughs> every time I'm here, you always send me a copy of the show and yeah. I put it up on my YouTube. Yes, yes. And so, and a lot of people will see it. Yeah, and then I'll send you the uh, I'll send you the MP4, which was the live version. Right. And people really like that. Hold that thought. I got to get a sip of water. Okay. Carry the show, Henry. Take well, the Victoria's Secret. To, right back. <laughs> you've been listening to Rob Mullins here and. Uh, you can go right to the back back there in the refrigerator and get a bottle. Uh, we have Rob Mullins in the studio here with his uh, uh, music for lovers. And you can go to iTunes and uh, type in Rob Mullins and get yourself a copy and just uh, and uh, gift it to somebody that you really, really love. And it's really nice. The whole album is extremely nice. And it, it's just absolutely incredible. And so with that being said, I tell you what. We're going to continue on with some more jazz music, and um, if you're just listening to it in the backdrop, you'll hear some more. And this ain't Rob Mullins playing. We're going to go to Miles Davis and some David Erickson out of Denver. Nice. Bob James. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As we conclude the show, you got to hear the entire album with some more extra Rob Mullins uh, music. And so with that being said, Rob, any last words besides get the album, go to iTunes, get it, just type in Rob Mullins. Yeah, you can uh, you go on Apple Music and just put Rob Mullins in there. It'll say Browse. You type in Rob Mullins, and it'll say, boom, Music for Lovers, Remaster, along with Two of Hearts. Uh, Two of was Hearts is really good. Last so year's. That was album. last year's that came through here, and that was also really well accepted here. And I still play a lot of the music oh, yeah. off of, uh, I do uh, Soulful, and there's a couple of other ones. There's one you did with Brenda Russell. No, I don't think that's on the album, but. Oh, that Brenda Russell thing is, well, Brenda's awesome. Yes, and so I play uh, some of that on the Smoothie Jazz Show. So we really push Rob here because his music is so uh, versatile and well-received. And I love having you here, Rob, your guest. <laughs> you know, we always start off in the back room, and we always know, we try to keep our some of our crazy jokes, you know, kind of under wraps, but Rob always makes me just uh, go crazy. <laughs> well, it's such a relaxed and cool vibe in your studio. That's the thing. I notice it when I watch the other shows. Because I watch Melissa's shows because yeah. I you know, I got a crush on Melissa. Who wouldn't? <laughs> I watch her and I'm always, I see her on there and I'm like, Melissa! You know, she I did one on relationships this last Saturday. Our phone went haywire. I got it working again. And she had 45 call-ins. I go, wow. Jesus. And I yeah. wish we would have got it going because she could have just been having a good time with it. Yeah, she's uh, Ignite with Melissa is a great show. All of your stuff, Steve, whose last name I can't pronounce, Stasley, Stasel. 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 <laughs> he always puts uh, how to pronounce his name. <coughs> Stalsy. 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 This is how I pronounce no, it. I'm not, <laughs> 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 not even told you. His dad was my teacher in, in uh, junior high and high school. What? And when he came here to look for a, a, a job, a position, and have a show, he was leaving, and we talked it over. And then he mm. was leaving. I go, Steve, come here, come here, come here. He goes, What's that? And I go, Your last name, Stalsy. It's very unique. Yeah, and he says, You pronounce it so well. I go, Because I need to ask you this. Mm. I had a teacher named Mr. Stalsy. He's out there in the middle of the hallway watching me. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, That's my dad. I go, What the <laughs> fudge? <laughs> and so we never, you know, we found that out. So it's a small world, man, mm -hmm. and you can run into people everywhere, uh, all over. And that's, you know, I think probably the most amazing thing about this project and my music in general is that music is what gets you through. Music is what the common ground is, what ties everybody together. You can forget about the politics. You forget about the uh, uh, impeachment. You forget about all of this stuff by going into the music and putting the album on and just letting yourself float away into that for a while because it's really an escape from all the crazy. And this is what I have to tell you about Rob Mullins. He always comes in here during Valentine's Day and gives you the baby-making music. He <laughs> goes to show you where his mind is at with his beautiful music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mull? Mull, come on. Absolutely. He, he puts out some good baby-making music. So we don't sell the rubbers in there. We don't sell... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go there. You know what's crazy? One last comment about my uncle, Zemo, <laughs> which I think is hilarious because I said, I'm going on the show with Henry, and he listens from, he's in Missouri, he lives there now, and he listens, and he loves you. He yeah. loves the show, and he's like always saying, man, it's great, and I'm 
Mondays and Thursdays. And I said, well, you know, do you have any advice? Because uh, you're the older, the older guy, and I sent you all those women <laughs> from the clubs and everything. He says, my advice is always break up with them a week before Valentine's Day <laughs> and save the money. And I was like, what a jerk. <laughs> yeah, the guy's like, but in this case, just go mm -hmm. on, send your girlfriend. Yeah. Music for lovers. That two of hearts. One hell of a good. Yeah, two of hearts too. Two also. of hearts too, and music for lovers. Yeah, send them both. Come on, they're not that much money. Get Rob some play here. You'll love it. And don't forget Monday, we're going to be playing the entire album. You'll see the uh, ad, ad up there. Yeah, I yes. poster everybody. They. It's almost. I'm almost like uh, now we say everybody. This one guy said this to me. What did he say? He says you're like Jake Jabs. Always advertising something. So whenever you're going to go look for furniture, where do you go? Character <laughs> furniture. <laughs> so I you always see K U H S K U H S L. Some Jake what Jabs. I forgot who Jake Jabs was. Is he <laughs> a local guy? Yeah, he yeah. became very wealthy in the furniture business because yeah. he advertises all the time. Oh, uh -huh. it's always uh -huh. in your face. You know, right. like, like well. you told me, it's like you keep getting K U H S in your face and. Well, this you've grown so much, oh, man. Huge. Like it's, a, it's since you this started, it's smaller setup here, and it's. It's got the volume of the audience, mm -hmm. and we're we were uh, we scaled back to forty three pat platforms, but somebody else added us on in Europe, and and it showed us. And then uh, our country show, they added us on their platforms, and they're going to one hundred and twenty countries. And so, it's like Jesus, you know. It's like and we know how many people are listening to us, and uh, it, we've already crossed over. We've already plateaued over a hundred and. Hundred thousand. We're at. We're now toward one hundred and twenty thousand people always logged into it. Wow! <coughs> and whether they're in for five minutes, two minutes, twenty minutes, or the mm -hmm. full entire show, they're logged in. Well, if you keep talking about the Victoria's Secret mask, <laughs> you'll get one hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> Don't forget the new Art Bark <laughs> show featuring Rob Mullins and Henry After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. <laughs> done. <laughs> and we're done in three, two. two. See y'all later. One. Z.